I want to talk about tori te. That's Japanese for grabbing and doing different kinds of joint locks and manipulation, also known as tuidi in the old Okinawan language. See, from the beginning, karate was not just punching and kicking and blocking, but also take down, choke, wrist lock, or elbow lock, these kinds of things that today most people only see in jujutsu or Brazilian jujutsu or judo or other arts that consist of more submission based grappling. But old school karate had all of this. So I want to teach you three different torite or tuidi techniques today. And then we can also look at how to escape or reverse those known as gyaku waza in Japanese. So number one, we're going to do them from a wrist grab. So right side, he grabs his right on my right. Now why would someone grab my wrist? It could be because he wants to prevent me from going somewhere or because he wants to pull me into a punch or something like that. Or it could be because it's a natural flinch response. For example, if I'm attacking his groin, he wants to grab my hand. So you need to understand why we're doing the wrist grab first of all. Then, here's number one. First of all, I secure his hand like this, so he cannot escape or try to punch me with this hand. Lock it down. Then I move off of the center line. If you imagine a line between our feet, I go just to the outside here. So my right foot is in front of his right foot. So he can use his free side, his arms or legs to attack me, and I pull him off balance. So it looks like this, like that, okay? I use my whole body, not just my arm, but actually the whole body as I move close to the center. This means that I'm strong. If I'm out here, I'm weak, because it's just my arm. So, close to the center, secure, slide to the side, and at the same time I go around his wrist like this. I wrap around, and then from here, imagine driving a, a motorcycle. I just roll around this way, grab, and then straight down. 90 degree angle here and here and always secure this one more time so he grabs one two to the outside around and down okay next instead of this way he now grabs that way <clears throat> again i secure his hand but now of course i slide to this side to get away from that dangerous side and also pull him out of balance. Kuzushi in Japanese. Then my hand goes like this, thumb on the inside, four fingers on the outside, and then here. Pull over, my elbow then comes down here and pull down. Push waki gatame in Japanese. I'm actually using both my elbow or the backside of my armpit if he's even stronger like that. And then of course his hand, his wrist, is also being pushed like that, 90 degree angle. One more time, he grabs, I go this way, and then, careful, push down like that, okay? Finally, double-handed grab. Now I'm gonna start with a atemi, a strike, because I know that he has both of his hands here, which means that it's hard for him to defend himself against my attack with my free hand. And he's very strong here, right? It's two against one. So, I do a distraction. Any kind of distraction is up to you. I can even use my legs. And then, after I distract, I circle again to the outside. This way. And I'm just gonna show here, look. I grab on the inside, like that. My free hand, after I distract, I just slide down here. And then I apply an elbow lock like that. And he taps when it hurts. I can even, like you see here, grab my own gi if I want to. And then this motion is important here with, with, with my wrist as I push down like that. So I get that scissor motion. So one more time, number one is here. Number two is here. And number three is here. Now, let's see how we can escape these. So if Oliver does number one on me, here, before I come to this position, because now it's almost impossible, I need to be fast. So I drop faster than he can push me down. 
so I can come up like that. Now my bicep is pushing up like that. And then my fingers are free here. So I just try to grab any of his fingers or his thumb with my hand here. And I pull down like that. Just grab whatever finger you can find. Again, so he goes for number one. I drop down and stop. Grab fingers, pull, careful. Finger locks are super painful. Good. Second one. So we were here, right? You go, yes. One, two, he comes here. Now what I do, first of all, you should always try to bend your arm. Straight arm, super difficult and dangerous for you. So I try to protect my elbow by bending my arm, but then my free hand goes here on the ground so I can support myself. As I then go back with my right leg and on the front side with my left leg, I jump and I take him down with the Kani Basami, uh, leg scissor in Japanese. Again, we can just go to the final position. We got me here, here. Support with the hand. Right leg behind, left leg in front. Here, whoop, and down. And then of course, <laughs> if you want to do a submission, you go for a heel hook, something like that. And the final one, double handed, remember? It goes here, goes for that. Before I get to this position, I try to grab my own hand like that and pull it in. I can even bite him like that Ugh, if I want to. Then from here I spin around. Here. Look. Here. Push up. If I do that without my partner, it almost looks like a kata, right? And in fact, all of these moves, if I do them without the opponent, without a partner, they look like kata. For example, number one would be like that. There are many kata where we have moves like this, or like this, or like that, or like this. The first lock, right? Here. You can see that move in so many kata. Number two was this, right? I go here. How many kata do you know with this move, or something similar? Many katas. And then number three, this lock, right? How many katas do you know with this pose? Again, like I said, old school karate, which was heavily based on self-defense, right? Used a lot of these different types of moves. And that's why when you look at Bunkai, this is what you will find. Let's look at that third one again, because that was pretty fast. So, he did this, <coughs> bite if you want to, and then tight as you roll around. Here, look, and then push up. And from here, I mean, you can do a lot of other stuff as well. But this is a, a joint lock as well. I hope these moves can give you some more insight into how to use other karate techniques and not just punches, kicks and blocks like most people do in modern karate. Train hard and have fun.